Today, I'm going to take you through the process of installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and unlocking the possibilities of Tony Stark level automations for your home. If you have been following my content on TikTok, you may already have an idea of what a Home Assistant can do. But for those who are new, Home Assistant is an open source platform that enables you to automate and control smart devices in your home. With Home Assistant, you can easily control your smart lights, switches, thermostats, cameras and other devices with a just a few clicks or voice command. You can also create custom scenes, schedules and automations to make your smart home even more efficient and convenient. Now, there are several ways to get started with a home assistant, but the most common ways are to use your existing computer if you can run it 24 by 7 or a standalone Raspberry Pi. Personally, I prefer the Raspberry Pi and that's what we will be focusing on today. To get started, you will need a few things. A Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card with at least 32 GB, an SD card reader, an Ethernet cable. This is only required for the first time and can be replaced with Wi-Fi afterwards. Although, I recommend using the Ethernet whenever possible. All the links to the products are linked below if you want to check them out. You will also need a computer to load the software onto the Raspberry Pi. Before we get started with the installation process, make sure to subscribe for tutorials on my home automations which went viral on TikTok. Firstly, you will need to install the application called Etcher on your computer. Download and install it and then open the application. Once you open it, select flash the from URL and enter URL I have provided in the description below. Once you have the URL in the text field, click OK. It will take some time to download the image and the URL dialog will close and move on to the next step once it's downloaded. Insert your SD card into the computer using an adapter and then click select target. Make sure you select the right one here as it's going to clean the SD card and also back up anything important that you have on the SD card file. Once you are ready, click select and move on to the third step. Finally, you click flash. Once the process is done, you will have a SD card with home assistant files on it. Safely remove the SD card and then insert into the Raspberry Pi's SD card slot. I am using a Raspberry Pi 3 for this demonstration but if you don't already have one, make sure to buy a Raspberry Pi 4 and I have linked everything in the description below. Now connect the Raspberry Pi to an Ethernet cable coming from the router and then connect the power cable. Wait for a few minutes then open a browser on your computer and type this URL homeassistant.local colon 8124 and you should be able to load the home assistant instance. If it doesn't work for you, then you might need to use the IP address to load the home assistant instance. If you are unable to reach the home assistant at that address, then find the local IP address that the Pi is connected to. Use your router admin interface to grab the URL and then load that URL on the browser with 8123 as the port. You might see a message saying that it's being configured and it will take at least 20 minutes. After the initialization, it's going to show you a form. Now it's time to configure Home Assistant. Enter all the required details and click on create account. This will create your account. Next, enter the name for your home and allow location. If you prefer not to share, then just manually select the location. Click on next. This is the best part. Home Assistant will automatically discover some of the devices if it's supported through the local network and show you here. It's just amazing. You will need to configure the devices you want to control through Home Assistant. Simply click on the device and then submit. A pop-up will appear asking you to add it to an area. It's important to get into the habit of adding every new device to its own area as this will make things easier for you in the future. Type the area name and if it doesn't show up, Click on add new and then add it. Once you are done configuring all the devices you want to add, click finish to go to the dashboard. The dashboard is a basic overview of the devices you have configured and it will change over time depending on which devices you use most frequently. For now, it's showing all my media players and the content they are playing as well as the auto discovered LED lights that you can easily toggle on and off. Now. Let's dive a bit deeper into the application and add our first device that's not auto discovered. I have Casa switches connected to my Wi-Fi, so let's add one of them. Go to the integration section, click on add integration, search for Casa and then 
select the CASA smart. It will ask you for the IP address, but just ignore that and then submit it. And it will try to discover the device. It found four devices. So select the one you want to configure and click submit. This will configure the device and ask you to add it to an area. Click finish and you will have a new integration added with the devices listed. Now let's test it out by selecting the device. This will show you all the details about the device including its information, automations and scenes related to it. You can also see the logbook on the right which shows you when it switched on or off and how it switched. You can control the device remotely using the toggle switch. Next, let's automate the device based on the sunrise or sunset. Go back to the settings and click on automations and scenes. Click on add automation. We will look at the blueprints later in this series. But for now, let's start with empty automation. So basically automation will activate based on trigger. It could be other device or sun event or a motion detection. For this basic automation, we will use sun events and select sunset. We can also add condition along with sun event, but let's not worry too much about it for now. Click on add action, select device, and then choose the device that we just configured and select the action as turn on the light and then hit save. Give the name for your automation. You can test the automation individually with each action or the full automation. Now let's move on to the scenes. Scenes are similar to automations, but they don't have any triggers and we can manually activate them. We can also reuse the scenes across multiple automations. When you sync them to voice assistant, you can activate the scene with multiple devices using a single voice command. It's just like magic. To create a basic scene, click on add scene, give it a name, choose an icon and then add it to an area. Choose the device you want to add and change its state what it needs to be when the scene is activated. You can watch this in real time as you change the states of these devices. Once you are done, click save. You can also add multiple devices to this same scene. That's it for this week's video. Don't forget to check out my automated movie poster for your media room. Thank you for watching. This is going to be a deep dive series for the home assistant and creating a complicated automations for your smart home. See you later.